Fora TV. The world is thinking. But why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? This is what Match.com, the internet dating site, came and asked me almost five years ago. And since then, um, and at the time I said, I don't know, uh, we, uh, psychologists know that we tend to fall in love with somebody from the same uh, socioeconomic background, same general level of intelligence, same general level of good looks, uh, similar level of education and religious and social values. Your childhood plays a role, but nobody knows how. Timing plays a role, but you can walk into a room and everybody is from your background and same general level of intelligence and good looks, and you don't fall in love with all of them. So I began to think maybe basic body chemistry plays a role. Maybe we're naturally pulled towards some people rather than others. So I began to look through all of the genetic uh, data, the data on neurotransmitters, the data on hormones, um, and to see if there were some chemicals in the brain associated with personality traits that drove you to be um, uh, 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 towards some people rather than others. Now, there's a lot of chemicals in the brain, but most of them keep the eyes blinking or the heart beating, etc. There's very few that are associated with personality traits. And those few are these four brain systems, the norepinephrine dopamine system, uh, the serotonin system, the testosterone system, and the estrogen and the oxytocin system. So what I did is I created a questionnaire to see to what degree you express the traits associated with these four chemical systems. And then 8 million people have taken the questionnaire. I watched in a, in a group of 28,000 people who was naturally drawn to whom. So I'm going to go through the very uh, broad personality styles. We're all a combination of all of them. Uh, these are brain systems, not cubby holes, but we do have personalities. We express some more than others. And then I want to talk about who's drawn to who and then how I feel this can be used in the business community. The dopamine norepinephrine system, I looked in 40,000 people. In this system, if you tend to be very expressive of these two chemical systems, I call them the explorer, bad term, uh, but uh, it's the best I had at the time. They're novelty seeking, risk taking, energetic, spontaneous, impulsive, optimistic, sexual, Curious, they've got the most interests, uh, highly creative. If you give somebody L-DOPA um, for Parkinson's, creativity tends to go up. Uh, often very liberal, open-minded. There's a downside to every personality type. They tend to be more manic, unpredictable, uh, reckless, and unreflective. These people look out, not in. Um, I did a study of 178,000 people to see what words these people used. Adventure. Top word used by this high dopamine type, spontaneity, energy, new, fun, traveling, passion, active, outgoing. I think Obama is a perfectly uh, wonderful example of that. He even moves like a high dopamine person. High dopamine person moves with the sense of style, uh, which he does. And they also have quite a bit of a facial expression, which he has. Highly optimistic uh, um, man. There's a humor magazine in the United States called uh, The Onion. On the day he won the election, um, it, the, it, it, it read, um, black man given worst job in the world. And indeed, he got it and still has it. Uh, um, serotonin, uh, uh, I call them the builder. It's a bad term. Had I read my Plato at the time, I would have called them the uh, guardian. Uh, these are the pillars of society. Um, the genetics of the serotonin system are associated with being conventional, traditional, cautious. They're not scared, but they're cautious, calm, social, uh, very managerial. These are the middle managers often of the world. Orderly, persistent details. They like the details. Don't give them the big theory. They like the details. Uh, loyal, conscientious. They respect authority. Uh, they like to follow the rules. They tend to be more religious, and they're very good with numbers. A bad side of them, uh, they tend to be more stubborn, close-minded, controlling, etc. The top word these people use is family. Morals, respect, loyal, trust, trustworthy, use that one twice, and values. 
Thank Gordon Brown. Of course, these people haven't taken my questionnaire, but just by watching what they say, reading what The Economist and other magazines say about them, uh, this is from The Economist, that he's a control freak, very detail-oriented, very much of a networking man, religious, frugal, uh, PhD in history. I think that actually does say something about the, the details. These historians do like the details. I think Colin Powell's another very good example. The fourth, uh, the third type is the high testosterone type. I call them the director. Um, Plato called them the rational. That's a better term for it. Um, in a study of 40,000 people, analytical, logical, strategic, very strategic, direct, decisive, tough-minded, very good at what scientists call rule-based systems. Everything from com math, computers, engineering, music uh, is a very um, structured uh, thing. Skeptical, rank-oriented, you inject testosterone in a monkey and it'll fight for rank. Uh, uh, emotionally contained. These are the people at Davos who don't move their face. They move the mouth, but none of the face. Uh, and the fingers, of course, with the blackberry. Highly uh, self-disciplined and emotionally contained. Poorer verbal skills and poorer uh, people skills tend to be aloof and more aggressive. The words they use, uh, there's a lot of different kinds of intelligence out there, but this is the word they use. Debate, geek, nerd, ambitious, driven, politics, challenge, they got to have it be real. They're the least uh, religious of the group. Uh, Sarkozy, I'm sorry, there's some people in the audience who know much better than I do. Uh, direct, blunt, uh, tough-minded, uh, and I think, uh, of course, we're a combination of all of them, very much of the explorer, too. And it was very interesting, after the G20 met in uh, London, um, he called Obama weak. And... Um, the uh, director hits you in the face, uh, uh, the explorer uh, stabs you in the back, uh, and is much more nuanced. I think the, these two men uh, come from very different biological personality styles and simply didn't understand each other. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a very good example of a woman who's um, high testosterone type. Uh, I don't know if you were watching CNN recently, and when she was in um, uh, Haiti, uh, not only did she, she showed almost no facial expression while she was uh, uh, with, well, with bodies uh, all around her. Very much of the high uh, testosterone. The Chinese were astonished at how, how blunt she was. Fourth type, uh, estrogen and oxytocin. These people see the big picture, imaginative, fine linguistic skills, very fine people skills, intuitive. It's called theory of mind, trusting, nurturing, emotionally expressive. Uh, egalitarian, idealistic. Downside of it is indecisive. These people live in a world of it depends. Well, it depends. We could do this, we could do that. It depends. They see the, all these possibilities. Uh, more unforgiving, uh, uh, gullible, effusive, um, etc. Uh, the top word they use is passion in this study of 178,000. Real, heart, kind, sensitive. These are the big readers of the world. Sweet, random. The other three types are not big on random. It's one of their top ten words, and, and empathy. And I think Bill Clinton's a very good example. Uh, uh, language skills, the uh, whole world knows he can't stop talking. Uh, um, real people skills, I'm glad our government sent him into North Korea to get those girls out, and, and not his wife. Uh, very emotionally expressive, uh, cried uh, when uh, Hillary uh, uh, gave her speech at the Democratic Convention. And I don't know about the rest of the world, but in America, he's well known for the statement, I feel your pain. Probably he does have more mirror neurons in his mind uh, and probably does feel some of your pain. Um, and he's high on testosterone. You can be high on testosterone and estrogen, uh, high on one, higher the other. But he's very much, and he's got, even got the, the baby face of the, of the high estrogen uh, type of person. I think Charles Darwin was a, another supremely fine uh, negotiator, synthesized uh, all of um, science at the time. And I think uh, that Klaus Schwab is the world's finest uh, negotiator. He sees the enormous picture in all the relationships and has tremendous compassion for humankind on Earth. So I've got, uh, you take my questionnaire and uh, you uh, are given a pie chart. We're all a combination of all of them, of course. Uh, and, um, and then uh, I was able to study a lot of other things about all, all, many of the habits of these people. But uh, Match.com wanted to know 
they didn't really care who you are. They were interested in why you fall in love with one person rather than another. So I watched in 28,000 people uh, who's drawn to whom. Female explorer goes for the male explorer. Male explorer goes for the female explorer. Female builder, the traditional type, wants traditional. Male builder, traditional, wants traditional. In these two cases, similarity attracts. Female director, Hillary Clinton, goes for the male negotiator, the opposite. Male director goes for the female negotiator, their opposite. Female negotiator goes for the male director, and the male negotiator for the female director. That's Bill Clinton and Hillary. In this case, opposites attract.